Welcome to the iRay Server rendering service on Nimbix. I'm going to quickly run you through how to use the iRay Server on the Nimbix cloud. So, to get started, we'll go to the following website here. I've also put a link in the video description for you as well. When the page comes up, you'll see we have several applications. We want the NVIDIA iRay Server application. However, first, we need to log in. Now, if you don't have an account already set up, click the sign up link at the top right of the page to get your Nimbix Jarvis account. I won't run you through that process here though. So I'll just sign in with my own account details and this will take us through to a dashboard screen where we can see our running jobs. What we want to do now is click the Compute tab, which will show us our available applications again. Select the NVIDIA iRay Server application, and then start the iRay Server option. This page shows the parameters you can set for your job. The most interesting one, and really the only one you need to set, is machine type. In this drop-down you can see all of the available GPU types. When picking, just remember that only professional Tesla models allow streaming, whereas the 1080 and Titan consumer cards only allow queuing. I'm going to go ahead and select the dual Tesla K40. This is a nice GPU with 12 gig of memory and we get two of them in this configuration. I'll just use one node for now. When you hit continue, a dialog will pop up showing the job data that will be submitted. You can ignore this unless you're interested in programming the Nimbix API. Once you hit Submit, you'll get another box with your job name and number, and your job will begin. Press OK to get rid of this dialog and go back to your dashboard. Now click your job to get the details. You'll see the status is processing for now. That means the job is starting up. If the type of GPU you've selected is very popular and none are available, it might say queued instead. Usually it takes about 20 seconds or so to start, after which you'll see the green connect button appear. There is also some help information you can read through to learn more. Sometimes the machine becomes available before the iRay server services are fully started. So we'll just click the output button to check the iRay server is ready. You're looking for this line at the end. You can usually skip this check, but if something doesn't work, check this first. You also have buttons for shutdown and abort. Shutdown is cleaner, so I'd recommend using this to stop your nodes. Now though, we want to connect to our server. Hit the green connect button and this will open the iRay server welcome page. This is where you get the details you need to log in to your node. You have the host name, the port, which you probably won't need if your application has sensible defaults, and the username, which is always Nimbix. We also have the password, which is automatically generated when you first run your node. The same help text we saw earlier is also included here. Let's log into the iRay server interface. First though, we'll copy the password. Click the connect button and log in with the Nimbix username and the password we just copied. iRay server opens up to our queue of running and finished jobs. We can view or download the results of previous jobs. Check out the resources. Note the two K40 cards here for hours. There's more to explore right now, but what I actually want to show you is iRay server being used. So let's close this and get an application up. I'll hit connect again to get my welcome page back with the login details. And I'm going to go ahead and copy the server name to the clipboard. I have Rhinoceros running here with the iRay for Rhino plugin. 
I'll just turn on my local rendering to make sure our scene is set up. So right now, this is rendering for my local GPU. So let's get it using our Nimbix GPUs. Pull up your array settings and go to the Resources tab. There are two sections here for remote rendering, streaming and batch. Click on the pencil to edit the details and always make sure the VCA checkbox is unchecked. Then paste in the server name that we just copied. Pop back to the welcome page to copy the password and paste that in. The username is Nimbix as always. Then we can press the sign in button. The little cloud should go green and the status will show you are connected. It will automatically reserve the node for streaming. If it doesn't, you probably used a consumer card. Now go back to the options tab and in the streaming section click the checkbox for remote streaming. When we use IRA now, in the viewpoint you will notice an upload progress indicator and a brief delay. It will say cloud in the top right of the window. So this is now rendering on Nimbix on two Tesla K40 cards and video streaming the results back. Let's try batch rendering with the queue. I'll turn off streaming and go back to the resources tab. Sign out of the remote viewport part and select the same resource. It's in the drop down now for the remote batch login. The status will change to indicate we are logged in. Now switch over to the production render tab. Check the batch rendering box and give our job a name. It's set up ready to batch render. When we press the iRay render button, now it will submit the job to the server. We'll flip over to the iRay server interface to have a look. You can see the job is in the queue and has already started. Updates come through as rendering progresses, so we can check how things are going. You can also see the total render time. Now it's finished, you can see it's moved to the done area. So that's simple queued rendering. Next, let's try the same server. We don't need to restart it, but this time with a different application. In this case, 3DS Max with iRay for 3DS Max. Let's get our server details on the clipboard again and pop over the 3DS Max. Like before, we'll just do a local render first. So here is iRay rendering on my local machine. To use iRay server, go to the settings tab in the render settings and find the remote streaming section under resources. Click settings and put in our iRay server settings again. Click connect and again, you should see you get a node reserved automatically for you. Now if I press render, there will be a delay while the upload happens, and then rendering will happen very quickly.
What's more interesting, however, is using iRay Server Streaming for Active Shade mode. So let's switch our render target to Active Shade. Now notice I can actually navigate while rendering and see the results streaming back to my window. So to finish things off, let's render a little animation. We have a camera path set up in this file. So when we set the frame range render in our queue, it will render all of those frames. Back in the settings tab, under network rendering, you can hit the submit to queue button to bring up the job submission dialog. We need our server details again, so I'll put those in and give the job a name. Notice it says here the range of frames that will be rendered. Once everything is OK, hit submit and the jobs will be uploaded to the server for rendering. Flipping back to the iRay server, we can now see the job has been added and is running. You'll notice there is a frame count now showing how many frames have been finished. Like before, we get progress feedback. Now that the job is done, we can take a look at the image. But to see the full results, go to the results tab and there we can scroll through all the images. We can also download a zip file of all the frames for importing into our video tools. Before finishing, there's one really important thing. You want to remember to shut down your iRay server nodes when you're not using them. You will be billed for the servers whenever they're up, regardless of whether they're rendering jobs or not. So make sure to shut them down when not in use. Don't worry, all your results and queue data is saved. So that's it for getting started with iRay server on Nimbix. Contact us through the links below if you need any help getting going.